Today I'll show you how to make this shockwave effect. I'll be doing it in Photopea, but you can follow along in Photoshop if you wish. I'll make a big square document, maybe 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels. The document has to be really big because of the way that the clouds effect works. I'll make a new layer and apply clouds. I'll convert this layer to a smart object. I want the clouds of effect to appear more stretched, so what I'll do is I'll make this 25% of its original width, and then I'll make a lot of copies of these to cover the whole document. Now I'll merge all these clouds layers into one smart object. I want to mask out the area that I'll use for the effect. I'll take the rectangular marquee tool and drag over an area. I want to feather out these these rough edges. So with the mask selected, I'm going to apply motion blur. I'll set the angle to 90 degrees so the blur is vertical. I'll add a pretty big amount, maybe 300 pixels. Now with the clouds layer and the background layer selected, I'll convert these into a smart object. And then I can use polar coordinates on this. There is one more effect that I want to add. I'll convert this layer into a smart object. And then I'll go to filter other minimum. I'll set the shape to circle. And this way I can make the shockwave look more smooth. I'll set the radius to 0 0.1 and slowly move it up until I get an effect that I like. Now I want to add some color to my shockwave. Hue and saturation will do this job well. I'll add a new hue and saturation adjustment layer and press colorize. And then I'll select a color that I like. To increase the brightness of the shockwave, I can use an exposure adjustment layer. I think I'll edit the shockwave a little bit by opening the smart object and changing the mask. I'll unlink the mask and use free transform on it. Maybe I'll also add some more blur. Once I save the smart object, and then I save this smart object, the effect will update in the main document. That's it for this tutorial. I hope to see you next time.